Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and I've got some friends today finally. This is really exciting. And today's gig, we just wanted to talk through the three minute thesis. The three minute thesis is a very special event that had its origins in Australia actually at the University of Queensland and has moved internationally through doctoral education for many reasons. And I've got two friends with me today. I've got Rebecca and Tiffany. And oh, look, I feel really privileged to be sitting next to Rebecca. Rebecca is an associate professor who, at Flinders University, who is really transforming how we think about children and obesity. And most importantly, the preventative mechanisms, the interventions we can make in childhood obesity and how they are evaluated. Because in your particular area, everyone talks about this as a problem, as an issue, as a folk devil, and all these interventions are promoted and discussed, but what actually works? And it's just a privilege to work with you, you and the university is really lucky to have you with us. And, and certainly in terms of doctoral education, your area, your expertise, I think, will have a whole programmatic research following you mm -hmm. around the planet, so I hope you'll stay with us for a long Absolutely. time. And we're going to use your expertise shortly mm -hmm. in terms of doctoral education. Now, regular vlog viewers might actually recognise the face that's sitting on the end. <laughs> One of my dearest friends on planet Earth, Dr Tiffany Knight. Now, Tiff, of course, completed her PhD with two A's. <laughs> passed without correction as we often call the gothic unicorn result <laughs> and she is our coach and we love that phrase too the coach for the three minute thesis competition she was the runner up in the competition herself when she went through it how many years ago two or three two years ago two years ago yeah. but also what makes her so, so special and spectacular to be the coach is that she also is an award-winning actor as well as being Dr. Tiffany, and she is a vocal and a voice coach, as well as an array of emceeing, remarkable emceeing gigs that she's doing at the moment, <laughs> Tiffany. But she is a remarkable international presenter, and of course an award-winning actor and an award-winning PhD student. Of course, she won Best Thesis. I did. A couple yeah. of weeks ago. So it's all happening. So as you can see, we've got two of the great women on the planet that just happen to be sitting with me in this beautiful room as the sun is shining through. And so what we wanted to talk about is why students can, why they should do the three-minute thesis. And we're about to start, I think, the next iteration of it this year, so let's get into this. So Rebecca, if I could start with you. You encouraged one of your remarkable PhD students to enter the competition, and she went on not only to win the Flinders University round, but finish in the top 10 in the country. So why did you recommend the competition for your students? Mm -hmm. So I had two students in the 2018 version, and I think the main thing was around um, the opportunity to develop the narrative of your PhD. Most of my students put together a couple of studies, but it was a way to bring together the story that underpins their thesis and wow. to bring the confidence to really own that story and sort of be transformative in developing that narrative. Oh, see, that's remarkable. In a time where research is about impact and engagement mm -hmm. and explaining the story of the research, I've never thought about that. That's, mm -hmm. that's a fact, and particularly for your area mm -hmm. too, the story of why it matters mm -hmm. is so incredibly important. So Chelsea, of course, did go on to, to win it. Mm -hmm. And the question I had of you, and this is sort of as a supervisor interested in your expertise on this, but how did Chelsea's approach to research change before, during and after the competition? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, her confidence, she was always a confident student, but to the confidence to own her research niche and how that fitted in with our broader program yeah. was transformative. The quality, you know, she was planning two studies at the time and the quality of the literature that she read and then how that influenced the study design, the ability to write her ethics application. She was successful in getting a Flinders Foundation C grant. Wow. So in terms of you know, tangible, concrete research outcomes, um, you know, writing manuscripts from, the, from her first study, 
you know, they all went from here to there in terms of quality. Wow, and I'd never thought about it in terms of ethics either, mm -hmm. because of course, what is the story of the research? Why does it matter? Risk mitigation, risk management, mm -hmm. that story enables all the different apparatuses mm -hmm. in research as well. Oh, wow. Now, Tiff, obviously looking back on you as a participant mm -hmm. of the three-minute thesis, when you were completing your doctorate, and this is a hard question for you and you and I, I'm not going to get upset, but what, <laughs> uh, but, but what, what did you get out of it as a scholar, as a researcher? Right, I, well I, I, I went into the competition in my second year, I was part time so I was in the middle of it, and I felt I was getting quite bogged down because I'd done my confirmation and I'd done my data gathering, but I just went, oh, got a long way to go and I don't really know where I'm going next mm -hmm. and my supervisor at the time had suggested well, why don't you do this because it's a it's a, it's a chance to reboot and because my my profession is to speak to an audience I thought well it's a chance to you know shake things up a little bit um, and maybe earn some money but I mean honestly I was about the money <laughs> and a chance to avoid working on my literature review <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out to be really remarkable because I think because for two reasons. Um, once one because I was I was sort of I lost my direction with taking all this data and knowing where to go with it next. And by having a chance to talk to people outside of my discipline with a fresh perspective um, and to tell that story to people who were not in my very discreet area, um, it gave me a chance to hear people say, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that has value. Have you thought about this? Or um, can you, um, where does it go here? And that was really, that was really useful for me because you get so specific and work, look in such a small, narrow field I was losing the big picture and I was losing why I was doing it. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing that was really valuable was that I was meeting people from dis different disciplines and um, discovering that I wasn't alone. Like, uh, it, we get really siloed working in the middle of a PhD and it was really wonderful to discover I was part of a community outside my very narrow s sphere and, yeah. you know, and just outside of me just looking at my computer for hours a day. So there was that aspect too. And look, uh, maybe this is why so many of us got into you know, education in the first place and higher education. We didn't want silos. We wanted knowledge to be expansive and those interdisciplinary links. And I think particularly in allied health, mm -hmm. allied health worries me often that particularly it is siloed, that you know, actually outside forces often silo mm -hmm. allied health as all that's over there. And particularly also I think creative arts mm -hmm. is the same. Of all areas of the university, the sort of that stuff over there and we, we do the main game mm -hmm. and like nutrition is over there. Mm. or creative arts is over there and actually they're the blood and the bone and the spine of so much of what we do in life at London mm. University mm. so I think that sort of engagement and outreach is incredibly important I think and again you focused on the storytelling aspect of research as well. Absolutely yeah and finding that narrative I guess by finding the narrative of what I was doing um, and being given permission to actually say, you know, it's not useful for me as a non-specialist to hear you talking about epistemology and ontology of what you're doing. Just tell me why you're doing it and tell me where, where the passion lies really um, reignited my passion for the subject. Yeah, and I mean, that's led me into the next question too, because at Flinders we promote the professional development going into the three minute thesis even if students decide to not enter the competition so we actually want everybody if you'd like to do the training don't think oh, you'll have to present the three minutes because I would find that quite frightening. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you Rebecca, would you find this uh, terrifying? I said to Chelsea and Britt if I ever had to do this, no way, but <laughs> since I've had to do it in research leadership as well so it's a critical skill yeah. to, to have the opportunity to start developing those skills in your doctoral years because it, you know pictures narratives telling stories describing impact these are core tenets of research practice at, you know in this current environment, environment. time yeah. absolutely so would you recommend Tiff in terms of a professional development project let alone you know not doing the gig itself just actually participating mm. in the PD bit would you recommend that absolutely if people are interested in doing it it's a it's just a great exercise and it's a great tool to be able to sort of look at your where you're at sort of from a meta perspective and then bring it back to um, some core principles that you can be able to communicate to another person those skills will have application all the way through and actually one of the things that I, has sort of twigged for me lately is mm. that 
what, one of the, the criteria of the three-minute thesis is that you've got to be able to demonstrate why your research is significant. You don't have to prove that you're changing the world with it, but you have to be able to have the, the judges walk away going, yeah, that has value. And to be able to phrase that in one sentence through this process will absolutely have value when mm. you're writing up your thesis. And look, it does too, because we've found as supervisors, the movement in the last few years has been from an original contribution to knowledge to a SOC, a significant original contribution to knowledge, and they're actually quite different things. Mm. So in some ways, the training for the three-minute thesis allows you to think, right, well, why is it significant? Mm. And that's really important. So, Tim, I'm going to push you a little bit to drill down a bit. So if someone is involving themselves in the professional development program for the three-minute thesis, right. what are you going to do with them? Are you going to damage them? What are you going to do with them? <laughs> No, no, I promise not to damage. We'll actually have a lot of fun. Um, you, so the, the way the model has worked to this point, and maybe we'll have some flexibility and fluidity, we can talk about that, but um, you would come with your, your three-minute script, whatever that may be. Um, it doesn't have to be learned. It doesn't have to be off by heart at that, at that point. But it's, three minutes is about 500 words, like 500 words telling the story of what you're doing, why you're doing it and why it's important. I guess those are the three core questions mm -hmm. to look at and then and an image that inspires you um, that would be the, the slide because you get one PowerPoint slide with the competition and whether you decide to follow all the way through into the heats and the finals that's your choice. I would persuade you that it's worth giving it a red hot go. Um, but I think even if you don't for whatever reason um, choose to compete just that exercise alone is a really, um, a really powerful mm -hmm. um, couple of hours to invest. Mm -hmm. uh, once you, and, and particularly, I think this is really good in the middle of your PhD. So after confirmation, where you, you have a more, a more of a clear idea of where your research is going, it's a great way to start to um, um, reignite for the, for the long haul of the yeah. getting to the thesis writing area. And can I also say, just sort of the Dean of Graduate Research, you have an opportunity to do a professional development program with Tiffany for free. People around the world, I'm going to say this because you're, you're spectacular, but people pay Tiffany hundreds and thousands of dollars around the world for that vocal training and for that performance training. So I'm terribly proud and terribly enthused that you're giving that gift to our students. But what I'd say is, even if you're thinking, God, I can't appear in front of hundreds of people, that's cool. You use the expertise of this remarkable human while she's with us. Mm -hmm. Use that expertise. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fine, and you know, like your so your part of the deal is you bring the script, your first draft, your first draft of your script, script, and then and then we play, and then we and we talk about how how to get over the nerves and how to get over the anxiety and how to use your voice and how to um, uh, own the space and really develop an engaging relationship with an audience. And yeah, absolutely, those are, those are skills that you're gonna need, not just for a competition, but you're gonna need those for interviews or for funding applications or speaking to the media, all of those things, so. Yeah. I don't know about you, it's always mm -hmm. challenging isn't it, when you're with Tiff on a video, you always want to yes. sort of stand, are you like this too? <laughs> when, are you go, I'm just, I need to stand yes. up straight and <laughs> breathe a bit more, a bit more aggressively, feel it, feel it. Um, Rebecca, final point for you and I as a family, as supervisors and, and as colleagues, there's a lot of pressure for students to finish in three mm -hmm. years, rightly so, good for the students, good mm -hmm. for the university, good for the supervisors. But to our colleagues out there, to the wonderful supervisors who are so precious to us at Flinders University, mm -hmm. what would you say to our colleagues about encouraging our very precious students to enter this competition? Mm -hmm. What would you say? I had concerns about the time investment. I was like, is it good use of Chelsea and others' time? Yeah. Having been through it last year, absolutely. It is worth the investment, I think when students are asking those questions of like what am I here for, what, what does all this mean, what do my research results mean, you know, where am I going and no matter if you have a student who's just enjoying the journey, wants to go into research, academia, um, media, industry, no matter what type of student they can all get a lot out of it and it's definitely worth the investment and they get peer support, they get professional support and it makes your job as a supervisor easier because they transform through the process. Oh, mm. 
I don't have to say anything, yeah. anything further. Can I also say one of the great moments of my life as Dean was when Chelsea won, and you both might remember this, the room went absolutely bonkers. I've never heard sort of like a, a shrill level of excitement. I know our deputy vice chancellor research was like, he had never seen anything <laughs> like this in contemporary higher education because the, the enthusiasm and the energy of the competition and all the support, and thank mm. you for saying that, of the support around people that you go, no one cares about my research. Well, that event really shows everyone cares mm. and they're supportive mm. and excited about it. Mm. So can I thank you both for everything that you do for this university. You're both incredibly precious to us and thank you for all that you do. And look, let's 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 play. Let's use a Tiffany word that she uses a great deal. Let's play. And if you just want to have a go, write 500 words and experience this professional development. It's good for your career in so many different ways. For the supervisors out there, I really was interested to see what Rebecca would say about the time commitment. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, maybe it truncates the time yeah. because it maybe writes the introduction, the conclusion mm -hmm. of the thesis as they're on that journey. Yeah. So thank you to both our colleagues. I hope everybody's well and see you at the three-minute thesis. <laughs> 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 so good. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Does that feel alright? Yeah, that was alright. That was.